I just want to reiterate on the, on the legal services. <clears throat> on both sides, I'm angry and I'm upset. This case has been going on for months and months. Nobody's been out there to see that family. And I think they damn well should have been from the start to today. She has let, felt so isolated. She's had no support from either side. Whether it be legal service or whatever, there's been none. And I take your point about the police. We arrived there this morning at 9.30 and there was a massive, massive production of police. There was also a squat team there up down the back. We saw that as well. And they were there to protect those white fellas. They were there to protect their police station. And I'm sure they thought there might have been one of those, like Palm Island. And who knows? Who knows now? Because we didn't get any justice today. I just want to talk a little bit about um, what happened inside. The prosecutor made an agreement and promised the three of us that he would ask for a jail term for those guys, that he would bring out evidence to support Alan, the victim. He never said nothing. And that's what's hurting us today. Alan didn't make it to the court, but he's, he's out in the community at the moment. He's very traumatised. He wants to talk about what happened to him. I intervened on Rosalind's behalf and asked the detective what happened to the evidence about Alan in an interview with the detectives at the Gundawindi Police Station in a video interview where it was pointed out that Alan stated that those two guys had guns to his head and a pair of pliers. They were going to cut his toes off. The only things that I could get my eyes on was some um, coloured photographs. And you can see plainly there was rope marks around Alan's neck. He did have bruises and scratches, but the defence lawyer said that happened a long time ago. Well, they're not, you know, they're not going to fit in and um, the kids are segregated anyway, you know, they, they, they go to school at Toomalara or Bogga and, and it's a struggle to get them to school anyway because of what's happening in their families and the trauma and so to even get them to school is another thing. But yeah, the, the town here is oblivious, they are obliv oblivious to what's happening and it's just astounding you've got a community not that far away out there struggling surviving every sec second of this day and this rich town here they're oblivious they don't know what's going on and, and the truth needs to come out because I actually believe people here there's some people here that would be quite shocked you know and then they're going to make a decision about what they do about it but we need to get it out it's just it's all hidden and it um, today just proved how hidden it is and how um, the police and the, and the law the Australian government law just railroads Aboriginal people once again. Look, it goes back to the same situation again. And that brings me to the point about Theresa Binge's murder in this town. We know drugs were involved in that. We know this town knows that there was drugs involved in that. People marched up and down this street and had a protest in this park. This community does know who the drug dealers are in this town. The, uh, the indigenous people know who they are. They're also feeding the white kids at the high school, and this, we've got evidence of this. They're feeding them drugs at the high school in this town. So they're not in the dark about that one. They know about it. So where do we go from here? Do you feel that the wider community parents should be out here marching with you to get rid of the drugs that are affecting these kids in this community here? They know about it, Bill, but they won't come and join us. They don't want to bring that out in the open. Well, I, I don't know. I don't know much about the drug situation in Gundiwindi, but there's not much for us anyway. I don't see anything for us anymore. That's how bad I feel. I, I just feel that, you know... You know, just how I've been set up today, I, I just feel awful. 
because I work with the police and and we work together to help the uh, uh, youth. And there I was today, you know, believing what they said that it will be fair, that it will be fair for the for Alan as well, but it, not 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 now, not now. I, I don't see that. They told us lies, Ada. They told us lies from 9.30 right through to 11.30. All those police were, that came to talk to us, they told us lies. No more trust. Yes. No we, we, haven't, we haven't got any trust in any of them at the moment. We don't need them to come out to our communities. And we don't want them. And they won't be allowed out there as of today. your concern and, and you know coming down to to uh, be with us and at this time you know thank you very much